going to do the, the first one with the CDC in it first, but let's start this one. Now, this one with the CDC, it's pretty heavy. I, and, and I kind of got my inspiration for that. It, anybody got the new Stalker catalog? You seen the fly that's on the front of that? Yeah. Well, this is real similar. I kind of looked at that and went, man, that, that looks cool. It's got to have a lot of life to it. It's got to, things got to work, work, work really good. Yeah, that old fly they had, the old one they had on the cover was kind of a funky fly. Yeah, no, this one was pretty cool. It's yeah. A, it's basically the same thing. So, so I'm going to get my bead on there. It's a lot bigger in the screen than it does on that piece of paper. <laughs> Can you see it? Uh, yeah. And when I'm, I'm using 15 thousandths lead. So basically with the lead, what I want to do is just, I want to fill the back of that bead up pretty much. I'm going to put about six or eight wraps in there. And it does that. But I won't need a big piece. I can cut it forward to boy the other three. <laughs> Probably find it online and go to Amazon or something. Yeah, like yeah. Amazon got everything. Yeah, Amazon's got everything. Pretty much, yeah. As a fan of Amazon, I decided to want to put one of those things on the clip. I'm trying to find a belt clip. Look up belt clips. You find all kinds of ammo stories, things like that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's more important as you get the name than anything else. That's you right. Get, you get what they call it, you find it. Yeah. Okay, so I got my lead on there, and I'm going to get a little bit of thread on there. And I should have my glue out. But normally, if you're using lead, you need to need to put some kind of head cement on it because it'll oxidize if you're using the, the lead substitute. I don't think you have to do that. So. so the body of this thing is is made out of this uh, stretch tubing. And there's, I, what I did, I made a, I take, I'm going to take some flashaboo and make an, an underbody and that, and that gives it, you can change the colors of the, of the body that way. You can also use uh, just thread to change change the color. So this tubing is kind of a a tan color. That's like holographic gold. gold. But you know, I, I tied some with a with kind of a light green uh, tubing with some with a fluorescent uh, 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 green. With that thread there it comes out came out really with a really cool color too. So if you get this, this tubing that's pretty light, you can you can pretty much color any anything you want underneath it. But this stuff flashes through it pretty good. They can create a rib underneath the tube easily with. Yeah, and the other thing you can do. Ultra wire in the tube. Ultra wire. If you've got a lot of patience, you can slip ultra wire inside the tube. Well, who was it? <laughs> who's it's a lot of patience. I, I tried a lot of patience. I tried that. <laughs> who's the other? Who's the guy that makes the tube? Um, God, I can't. Larvalase. 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 What he was doing is they were actually injecting into uh, the larvalase. They used to fill it with some kind of vegetable, vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. I think that was a little over the top. <laughs> no, no, it was inside the tube. Yeah. And you tie it down at both ends and it gives you a, a yeah, whole different... Yeah, it was kind of a lot of work. I've seen the wire trick done a lot, though. The wire is not that unusual. Yeah, but trying to, you ever try to feed wire through this? Oh, one? I know. It's... You should have went to one of the bass guys and took that fish attract and stuff and put that inside. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so now with this tubing, I'm gonna, That's I'm, gonna I'm gonna start stretching it on the back end here. What size hook is that, George? This is a twelve. It's a okay. it's a Dairy Key uh, one twenty five or Tiemco twenty four eighty seven. You could do you know do these down to like sixteen. It'd be a little bit of a chore. You have to stretch it a lot thinner than that. Well, you can get micro tubing though too. You, this okay. is like a small. This is you could you could get the smaller tubing and do it. So you want to cinch that down pretty good so it doesn't come loose on you.
See the dif difference with that, the, just the plain tubing and then with that, the that flash of glue underneath it. So you can basically change the color any, to anything you want. So the tube doesn't really matter the color as long as it's a light color tube. Well, you can use clear, but I mean, you know, it's a bit yeah, but you can, you know, there's a lot of different kinds. Okay, so here comes the interesting part of this thing. I'm going to do some split thread dubbing. I don't know how many of you have done that before. But. So in order to do split thread, split thread dubbing, you have to have dub, uh, thread that will even flatten. So you can't really do it with uni thread. It's, it's bonded. This is, I don't know if you can see that or not. See how that flattens out? Yeah. That's ultra thread. So what you want to do, you want to spin your, spin your thread till it's, it's pretty much neutral. It doesn't have a twist in it. And I usually take a bot, my bodkin and flatten that out. I try to split it down the middle as best I can. There's a cool new little tool that they do that with, but it's like 30 bucks. Pedigree makes that. Sonofo yeah. makes it. Yeah, yeah. Sonofo, so it's Pedigree. Yeah. So they, yeah, they actually lay it on there and you, when you push the thing, it splits it in the middle. Right. So why not just make a W loop? It's because much much bulk. Bulk. It's, yeah, it's not as much bulk and, and it's, uh, you don't have to have the two threads and it's just, it's better for small flies. Yeah. Well, I do split thread. You can split it. Well, you, I guess you could. Yeah. Say, do it exactly the same way you did, and it will it will flatten. Yeah, so but it's, it's a little bit. A little no, if you tougher. do this, if, if yeah. you do it exactly what George did, you counter spin it, and then use your bodkin to flatten it, attach to the hook, and then lay it on your finger. It'll work the same way. Okay, so that's probably going to be about enough. So the trick here, so I'm just going to hold on to the the back of the thread, and now I'm going to twist my thread the opposite direction. I'm going to, I'm going to twist it tight. I'll hang, on, I'll hang on to that. And then I'm just going to let this go. And see, it coils it right up. Yeah, it's the only trouble is when you split, split it like that, you got to have the right amount because if you get too much or too little, you're, it's in the thread. So yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't adjust it like you could in a loop. So yeah. that's, that's the good part about a loop. So I may have a little too much here, but it'll be just big and hairy. So I want to kind of pull it, pull it back as I go. Take my velcro here and close it out a bit. And neaten it up a little bit. It kind of comes out a little bit like a fontaine sparkle. Pool. It does, it kind of gives, yeah, and this stuff is really. It's really got a lot of spark to it. Yeah, this is this, Yeah, this is. I like this. This is this SLF. Oh yeah, that's and they make nice. a bunch of different. This is this is Whitlock's blends, but uh, they make a bunch of different different stuff. And then I'm going to use CDC for the for the hack on this thing. This isn't isn't the greatest CDC. You need to find feather that's fairly full. That one's pretty good. So what happens is most of these CDC feathers are actually going to be too long. It's going to make the hackle come way back here. So what I'm going to do is kind of judge this thing out to where I'm going to put the stem at the back. And I want my fibers to be right about that long. So I'm just going to trim these off a little bit. I'm just going to turn it around and make the other side basically the same. Then like a regular soft tag one, I'm going to tighten them by the tip. And what I like to do, I like to pull all the fibers back on it. Can you see that? And that's where my tie-in point is going to be. And 
these feathers are kind of fragile, so you have to be a little careful when you pull on them. CDC, there's more floatability closer to the base than at the tip. It's because the additional barbules, yeah. if it turns the butt. And this is this tip. is more for they trap air too, so this isn't really to float the thing. These are this is just to lead put on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you can use CDC two ways. You can use it to float your flies, but but it does trap a lot of air. You can see all these little tiny fibers coming off the what are those the barbules or the barbules? Yeah. So th those all trap a lot of air. So between that and this that dubbing, the thing's gonna trap a bunch of air and look kind of sparkly. So so a technique I like to use that Gene showed me years ago is called scissor folding. And you can take your scissors if you're careful. And just keep them closed. Shuey does it with them open and he does the blade side and he doesn't uh, rip everything off. Do it, I don't he, know he how he does it. If you do it too hard you're gonna cut the fibers off but like I piece. watched I watched John Chu do that a number of times and he amazes me that he doesn't cut his fibers off. These, these scissors have like a square edge and the square edge works works the best for doing that. But you just run them along. Some some feathers work great, some don't. But what it does is it folds them back. So I usually I usually do one side. I know you do a little different than I do, Gene. Okay. I'll do one side and then I'll try to do the other and see what it's done. It's got my fibers going in the direction I want them to go. Right. So here I'm gonna make yeah, a couple of wraps, two or three wraps on this. And if you pull too hard, you'll break the stem on these things. Yeah. So that, that, <laughs> that should be plenty. Yeah, Georgia, we had it for a fly tie night. We had to do that material thing. We had yeah. Done that for a few years. Yeah, you do need that. We got a photograph in there. We did at Ed's house. Shows you what CDC looks like underwater and how it captures air bubbles. When I saw that, it was amazing. I always heard it's supposed to work. Ed got okay. some good photos for us on that. So one. I've got my hack one, so now I'm just going to cover up that thread with just a little bit more. More just building. The thing I like to do with, you know, you try to dub ice dub and it's real, don't like steel wool. Yeah. If you throw a little bit of, say, rabbit or something in there, just something that's a little bit finer, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, dub like this. That's it. That's got a lot of a lot of life, a lot of sparkle to it, a lot of movement. Good for the fly. Yeah. Sure, yeah what I've got. Time any color you want. I mean, all of them, all chartreuse, whatever you want. You can see that.